happy to sit down with you, Mark, and, and welcome to a missionary moment. Right. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. So I met you for the first time. Well, see, I started here um, June of last year, and you're basically here every day. So I probably met you <laughs> right when I Pretty started. Quick. Um, yeah. and I, were you, were you recording the masses at that point? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. For sure. That started up in COVID. Yeah. That started at COVID. Yeah. Okay. So the daily mass was probably coming out of COVID, you know, when we finally could have daily mass again, started recording them. So, okay. but the Sunday started, you know, right at the start of COVID. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Mark, uh, sure. where you're from, what you do. Sure. Well, I was, uh, I grew up in New York. And uh, I'm retired now, and I'm a, from a family of seven boys. Uh, I'm third oldest, and um, I was uh, a cradle Catholic. Uh, my mother was very heavily involved at the church and the school, and she had all her boys uh, down uh, helping out. Uh, she would decorate the altar um, at Easter and at Christmas, and she also had us down there helping to um, <clears throat> clean the church at times. So. We were pretty involved. I was an altar boy. Um, I, uh, one uh, Lent, my brother and I served the Mass every day for Lent. We just decided we wanted to do that, as I remember it. And um, so, uh, and so I went to parochial school from first uh, through eighth grade. There was an influential priest in my life. His name was Father Rogers. I just remember um, him being just a really cool guy. He used to shoot hoops out in the parking lot when uh, the weather was warm, and uh, I remember times where we were shooting them in, inside when the weather was cold. So he is kind of a, a big influence on my life. I even went uh, so far as to go to seminary um, kind of discernment uh, summer camp between the seventh and eighth grade. Oh, really? Okay. And uh, yeah, my older brother actually went to the seminary for one year. Uh, before he gave it up. So this is high school seminary. So in any case, uh, I think the point being is that, yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was pretty heavily involved and uh, uh, kind of knew Jesus back then as a middle schooler, you know, knows them. And uh, um, when I got to high school, there was, uh, I unexpectedly ended up in a public high school. Um, there was some turmoil uh, that is way beyond the scope of this talk. And uh, I ended up in public high school instead of Catholic high school. And I slowly um, fell away um, as I was in Catholic high school. And uh, Public high school? Yeah, excuse me, yeah. public high school. <coughs> yes, thank you. And um, in college, I was pretty much completely away. Okay. Perhaps at times I would come uh, back from uh, uh, Christmas vacation. I'd go to midnight mass. Okay. Yeah. So when you're in so, public high school, you feel like the... The, the the fade from the faith started then and was it was it like a conscious or was it sort of like an unconscious fade of just kind of stopped practicing did you stop believing or what do you think how did that work yeah i think i just stopped practicing i don't think i ever stopped believing frankly i don't think i ever lost my faith i think um there was this little like pilot light of faith in my gut that i you know i, I never stopped believing in god um, I did, um, over the years, I think I convinced myself that, you know, when you die, um, uh, you just, uh, you know, go to sleep and you never wake up and it's very painless. And so um, that, uh, uh, I don't think I was ever completely satisfied, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I convinced myself of that. But uh, mm -hmm. any, that, um, I think I just got too busy, you know, mm -hmm. um, trying to be successful. Um, uh, uh, saving for retirement, so on and so forth, as I eventually came out of uh, high school into college and then eventually into my career. I'm an electrical, I was an electrical engineer and um, uh, had a successful career. I really enjoyed it, it was wonderful. I didn't, you know, I didn't feel like I was uh, missing anything and uh, I retired when I was <clears throat> 61 years old. I took an early retirement package and and before I came back to the church, I um, had been retired for uh, about two and a half years. Okay. So, and I like to stress that um, I didn't feel like I was missing anything. Hmm. Um, I wasn't searching for something. It was like, oh, I'm retired now. I'm bored. No, I was. There was plenty to keep me busy. Um, I am an avid runner, so I 
I jog every day for eight miles and that tend to keep me busy throughout the morning and in the afternoon there'd be chores or whatever to do. Mm-hmm. And I was an avid sports fanatic and so in the evenings I tend to, you know, watch baseball in the summer and hockey in the winters or, you know, whatever. Right on. So I had plenty to do and I was enjoying myself. It was just absolutely, you know, wonderful. I was um, was really happy I retired. Um, I was kind of retired unexpectedly. Some people said to me they were surprised I retired because I really did enjoy my work. But mm-hmm. but I did. And, I'm and not you sh- look like you're 50 years old. So what? there's that too. <laughs> yeah. So anyhow. Um, so yeah, that was my life before, you know, before I came back. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything. So was that like, um, you said that was 30, how, how many years was that then? That well, you, were, you know, you it, well, the, from the time I went to confession, I'm guessing my last, I don't remember my last confession, <coughs> frankly, but I'm guessing it was in eighth grade because I was still in parochial school. Okay. So I probably, when I went to, you know, high school, then I probably stopped going to confession, although I didn't stop going to church right away. I yeah. think that was kind of a gradual type of thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, when you're in the eighth grade, I guess you're 13 years old. So mm-hmm. I was confirmed. Oh, that's right. I'm con- I was confirmed in sixth grade. So some people might be thinking, well, let's see if he fell away in college. He was never confirmed. But back then we were, you know, we had confirmation in the sixth grade. The sixth grade. Okay. Yeah. 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 And sometimes that varies diocese yeah. to diocese. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. So you were well, in high school, you said eighth grade, maybe since your last confession, so mm-hmm. 13 mm-hmm. and you came back. How many, yeah. how many years is that? Then? Yeah. So then I came back in uh, 2019. So I was, I think, 64 or whatever. So, okay. Yeah. And so it was, it was a little bit, you know, from a confession point of view, it's probably a little bit over 50 years. Okay. So, so then when I finally did go to confession, it was like, you know, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been <laughs> over 50 years since my last confession. You heard a gasp on the other side of the screen. Yeah, I, yeah, I, have, I have a joke that I tell, but I'm not, I'm not going to tell that today. Okay. So. <laughs> it's, right. it's, it's, well, with the world somewhere. watching. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and that, that was way too solemn of an event to be, um, you know, I can only, you know, perhaps looking back on it, you yeah. know, at the time it was, there was no laughing matter. So, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. But in any case, I guess we're getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit. So one day, so I'm, I'm running and, um, you know, I run eight miles and I was about four miles uh, through my run. And it, it was a Tuesday morning and um, it just popped into my head. It just popped into my head. You should go to church on Sunday. And it was just, um, it's just that simple. Hmm. Again, I was not searching for anything. Uh, I wasn't bored. I wasn't like, oh, you know, I, I need meaning in my life. Or I, I was hmm. perfectly happy. It just, it just popped into my head. Hmm. This was um, early January um, mm-hmm. uh, 2019. Now, what happened leading up to it, I kind of got ahead of myself again, is that um, I was back in New York um, visiting. And I had a cousin's uh, husband who uh, just had recently got a cancer diagnosis. So when I was back there at the family event, I was talking to him, super nice guy, his name is Carlos. Um, I told him I would pray for him. And at the time I said I would pray for him, it was just the right thing to say. Mm -hmm. It wasn't genuine, you know, I don't think. and we say that so, all the time, don't yeah, we? Yeah. Well, now when I say I'll yeah. pray for somebody, oh, it's genuine. Yeah. And I, when I say I'll pray for somebody, I pray for somebody. Mm-hmm. But, you know, back then I'm completely yeah. away from the church. This is, this is now 10 months before it popped into my head, you should go to church okay. on Sunday. So um, when I got back to Wisconsin that night, I, uh, a couple days later, um, um, I said to myself, well, you told Carlos you would pray for him. If you have any integrity whatsoever, you should, you should pray for him at least once. So mm-hmm. that night, uh, laying in bed and before I fell asleep, I you know, prayed for Carlos. And so the next night it was like, well, you know, you can't pray for him just once. <laughs> it doesn't right? make I mean, sense. That, yeah. That, yeah, you have to do it at least right. twice. So, it was, so I did. So to make a long story short, yeah. I prayed. I got in the habit of praying. And was and this I, the first time you this consciously the first time I prayed? prayed and... for, yeah, for years and years. Well, okay. I'm watching, you know, 
you're watching your sports team and you pray, right? Now, I never pray for sports teams. Now, I wouldn't dare, you know, ask uh -huh. the Lord to help my team win because, you know, there's too many people involved on too many sides. And, you know, you, you know so I, I never pray for sports anymore. But back then, I, you know, yeah, the, you know. The, I think you have the more, more integrity than you know, most fanatics. Yeah. <laughs> the classic, like, Hail Mary, you know. Yeah. Hail Mary, we need yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> so anyway, and football, so. Um, yeah. So uh, I prayed and I started praying for, you know, my family and, you know, relatives and, and so on besides Carlos. But I always pray for Carlos. So, so fast forward, this is like March, um, you know, of the year. And fast forward 10 months into early January. And um, this is when I'm out running and it just pops into my head, you go to church. So the rest, it was a Tuesday. So the rest of the week I was... Um, you know, thinking I'd chicken out. You know, when Sunday came, you would just, you know, make up an excuse and you wouldn't go. But, you know, I, but, uh, for, you know, I, did, I went. So I went to 10 o'clock Mass at Notre Dame and it was absolutely wonderful. There was peop lots of people in there, as, you know, before COVID and uh, singing and praying. And, you know, I'm sitting there getting goosebumps, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of bringing back some perhaps childhood memories. And uh, so I enjoyed it. I went home and, uh, you know, told my family about it. And uh, I said, well, I'll go back next week. And so I went back a second week. And in the meantime, I started anticipating that perhaps I'll want to go to confession. Mm -hmm. So I started um, <clears throat> examining my conscience. Mm -hmm. And uh, in any case, the second week, I, you know, I went again. And, I, and both times I didn't receive. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know um, that you could bless your hands and go mm -hmm. up and receive. So I would stay in the pew. Mm -hmm. And that was a little embarrassing. Yeah. And so I'm saying to myself, oh, you got it. You have to go to confession soon mm -hmm. here. And uh, so But so you, I did. you knew that since you that, hadn't been to confession in a long time, oh, that it would that it'd be appropriate to, to, to go and be reconciled first? Oh, absolutely. So that was, that, after that, 50 years, that was still... Oh, yes. That was still uh, yes. ingrained in you as yeah, oh, absolutely. not just like an idea, but... N a truth that you want yeah, to apply yeah, yourself to. Yeah. Over the years, I was in a Catholic church many times, not many times, but, you know, a handful of times for weddings or funerals. Mm. And I would, um, I would not receive. Okay. Because I just felt, well, to me, if you don't go to church on Sunday, you shouldn't receive mm -hmm. until you've been to confession saying that. So you, I, I miss really, church on yeah, Sunday for so no good reason. That's so interesting because... That's the way I was brought up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're saying so, there was a real still conscious belief... And, and what the church taught, there was just kind of like a non-practice of it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because, yeah. I just ignored my faith, yeah, basically. Yeah. I was too busy being successful, saving for retirement. Hmm. And, um, but I never stopped believing. I just stopped practicing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and like I said, convinced myself that when I died, I'd just go to sleep and mm -hmm. wouldn't have to fear the Lord for mm -hmm. you know, any, anything. So there was so, no major, there was no major barrier or obstacle to you, like wanting to practice your faith. It was more just, it was just other endeavors, other things taking your energy and applying yourself to that. Yep, exactly. Yeah, just different priorities. Yep, just yeah. different priorities. Yep, right. it was, yeah, my faith was not a priority. It was, it's interesting. It was it, completely buried. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. and uh, and Sherry Waddell's groundbreaking book she wrote in 2011, I think it was called "Forming Intentional Disciples." She she cites this Pew Research, this this massive Pew Research project that was trying to kind of get at the heart of like the top five reasons why Catholics stop practicing their faith, and the top two. I guess it's 2011, so the, the metrics might have changed a little bit. Mm -hmm. But coming in number one at 74%, for, for people that stop practicing their faith, number one reason, 74%, said, and they could select more than one reason, but this was the highest metric, it was no reason, I just faded away. from it. I just stopped going. Mm -hmm. Second highest metric mm -hmm. was I wasn't being spiritually fed. That came in at 71%. So number one reason, 74%, no reason why I stopped practicing. There's no obstacle, really. I just had other priorities. Second reason, at 71%, I feel like I'm, I'm practicing. The, my practice of faith is not generating real fruit. I'm not being filled up. And then way down at, at 27%, the third reason, third highest reason, um, was uh, abuse reasons, so financial or, or sexual abuse or whatever it might have been. So it was, it was a distant third and it was on the yeah. list, but 
kind of to your point, I think, of yeah, of of reasons at least for for modern people. If we can, if we can, like modern Western people who have the chance at a, at a great job and you apply yourself with hard work and intelligence, that it's maybe just other priorities. Yeah, it was just priorities. And there was one, you know, leaving a parochial school, going to a, a public school. Mm-hmm. There was less of the kind of uh, opportunity and or, you know, kind of re- reminder of, oh, yeah, you really should. Right. So that probably you know, yeah. helped yeah. as well. So, so yeah. Um, so you, you started to, you're, you're praying now. You'd gone t- to Mass twice, and you're preparing for confession. Right, right. And I started preparing. I remember it being like a whole week. Mm-hmm. And what I, was, I made a list of, uh, you know, of uh, my sins. Right? 50 years, there's, and, you know, there's just the big ones, right? Mm-hmm. But you'd still be in the confessional <laughs> if, uh, yeah. if I, it was all the smaller ones, the venal ones. But in any case... Um, I would each day I'd run, and by the way, now nowadays running, I it's, it's like my upper room. Hmm. You know, I think you know people say, "What's hmm. where's your upper room?" Is the place where you're with. I I pray the rosary. I, I run eight miles, and I pray all um, twenty decades hmm. of the rosary wow. while I'm running, and so um, it's kind of like where I kind of go to be hmm. with. God, you know, mm-hmm. it's because you're just out by yourself. And, wow. uh, people ask me like, "Well, how do you, how can, how can you concentrate?" And I, well, well, you know, what else are you going to do when you're, you know, you aren't running? I mean, you do it every day, so uh-huh. it's absolutely wonderful. Wow. So, um, but anyway, I've lost my track. Of that, thought where that's I'm, okay. So, we were just, we were just talking about coming, coming yeah. back to confession, and then yeah, yeah, okay. After, so, after so each day while I was running, something would pop into my head. It's not like you can go back over 50 years and remember yeah. everything. Right. So for about a week, I you know I'd be out running and I'd, something would pop into my head that oh yeah remember you did that oh how embarrassing mm-hmm. and <laughs> so I'd go home and add it to the list mm-hmm. you know so after you know after a whole week of adding to the list I you know I said okay I think I'm I'm ready mm-hmm. and uh, and now it turns out I actually forgot a big one mm-hmm. uh, afterwards and so like two weeks after I went to confession I went back a second mm-hmm. time. And confess that one. That and what was that forgot. like? What, what was it? So, uh, what was it like returning to, to? Was it was it hard to go to confession after oh, such a long time? Was it intimidating? Oh, I was. Yeah, I was. Yes, it was. Well, first off, I didn't even know where the confessional was in the church. <laughs> you know, Notre Dame Church. Um, it's up in the front left corner, and I always come in through the main entrance. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. I. When I was in, you know, when I was falling away from the church, I would kind of go around and come in the side church, you know. And I said to myself when I came back, I said, "You're going through the front door." And to mm-hmm. this day, anytime mm-hmm. I go to a new church, it's like mm-hmm. you're finding the front door and you're going through the front mm-hmm. door of the church. So I went through the front door and I didn't know where the confessional was because you can't see it from. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd sit about halfway up to the altar and been you know, so anyway. Um, so I went, it was a Wednesday morning and, uh, you know, uh, it was, uh, there was no divine mercy chaplet back then mm-hmm. after mass. So mass tended to em- empty out the mm-hmm. church emptied out pretty quick. And, uh, there was no one that was sitting up by the confessional. So father, I, I'm not even sure he went into the confessional. He was up at the ambo. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know what the heck I'm doing. And so I walked up to him and said, father, I'd like to go to confession. And so he pointed over. To the, it's just go sit over there mm-hmm. and so then I turned and I could see it mm-hmm. and uh, so I went over and sat and you know he came over and my heart is beating like you mm-hmm. know 100 150 you mm-hmm. know probably <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so when I got my list you're, and, you're running and, and stamina prepared <laughs> you for this yeah. moment yeah so I had my list and I walked mm-hmm. in there and I had forgotten uh, the uh, um, you know the a- act of uh, contrition mm-hmm. And uh, but fortunately, it was there printed, yeah, you know, yeah. So, and I and I still to this day I go behind the screen, yeah. Uh, that was that's all we did back, back in you know, when I was growing up. So, you know, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been over 50 years since my last confession. These are my sins, and you know, He helped me through it. And there mm-hmm. was lots of questions and back and forth, and yeah. It wasn't just like you know, blah 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 blah, it was you know, it was kind of took us a little while. There were some things to discuss, some issues, um, and uh, and then I made my act of contrition. When I came out, it was 
greatly relieved. And when I was a kid, you went to your pew, you went to a pew and you said your, mm -hmm. your pants. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know what happened, but I just, I wasn't planning this and I just saw the communion kneeler mm -hmm. and I just picked up on that and I just went right for the mm -hmm. communion kneeler wow. and I looked up at the tabernacle and I was having like waves and waves of uh, just relief wow. and joy and like I'm back, uh, uh, wow. you know, with you, Jesus, you know, and it was just, it was wonderful. Wow. Now, it turns out that Father, you know, he gave me uh, this, some things in, uh, from my penance that I, you know, one of them was a rosary. And um, uh, I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't remember how to say the rosary. So I had to go home and, <laughs> had to go home and Google you know, <laughs> how to say the rosary. And there was a few other yeah. things that I had to Google. Right. And so it took me a couple of days to do my penance wow. because I had to learn yeah. how to do it. Yeah. So that Friday, so this was a Wednesday, Friday morning, I went to daily mass and uh, I received mm -hmm. for the first time. Wow. And it's, uh, well, it was absolutely wonderful. Oh, absolutely wonderful. So, yeah. um, so then I thought back to my childhood. It was so now, you know, it's January, so Lent is coming up. And um, I said to myself, well, you, you should, you know, go to church every day and then, and right through Lent, wait for Lent, and then you'll go. And then just like you were as a kid, you'll, re, re, you know, uh, repeat that. And, um, and then when Lent's over, you'll, you'll stop and you just go on Sundays. Well, that was the plan. Well, I'm still going every day, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. never, you know, I was, I had, it was wonderful. So I was, mm -hmm. there was no um, not going to church yeah. anymore. So, right. yeah. So, so how were you, so you, you show up in the, and, and darken the doors of this church. You, how many years had you been living in Chippewa? Were you, uh, yeah, so you I weren't moved, new to yeah, town. We, no, no, we moved here in 1985. Yeah. So this is, uh. You know, 2019. Did people perk 20, up and notice like it was, Oh yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, um, yeah, people eventually would, uh, come over to me. Actually, the first person I interacted with was Mike Porter. Um, mm -hmm. he, he, they were doing the Latin chants in the mm -hmm. Sanctus. I didn't know how, you know, and I could see he'd open up his hymnal. And so I went up and asked them, uh, um, you know, where in the hymnal was, you know, where the Latin chants, and so he showed me. Mm -hmm. So I got to know him, and I don't know when, weeks, months later, he came up to me and asked me, he said, you know, I bet you you were an altar boy as a kid, and I said, yeah, you're right, and he said, well, we, you know, I could, you know, we always use some help, so, so he asked me to be an altar boy, and then uh, uh, I pretty quickly decided I kind of wanted to get back, because I was able to retire comfortably. Mm -hmm. And um, so I wanted, uh, so I got involved with all social justice ministries mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Um, I worked at St. Francesca's for a bit, and uh, as part of that, I was uh, I went down to a Feed My People food bank conference, mm -hmm. and that's where I got uh, uh, introduced to Mike Cahoon. And he talked about the tiny houses, yeah. and I went to a breakout session, and I start and I got also um, uh, kind of. Uh, inspired uh, that we should have a, a tiny house at, uh, at Notre Dame. At first I was actually thinking we could have them at all the Catholic churches, but mm -hmm. it turned out Notre Dame was a good fit. The other two so were a tiny house is a small so, house for, for homeless yeah, people. Yeah, they live yeah, there free of charge. Right. Yeah. Yep, they live free. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For people that be watching this that aren't familiar, it's like Hope Village, org. You can uh, Google it if you want. Uh, right now, they're just uh, uh, they have a it, it, the church the house that we worked on has just moved to they have mm -hmm. a new site. And so, as you were, what what were some of the some of, some of the milestone uh, pulls that maybe you felt or or affirmations along your your journey back to the church? Because, like you said, you, you weren't experiencing this sort of existential unhappiness. <laughs> But were there were there signs or, or affirmations or or draws that you were experiencing along the way here? Sure, um, but it, it um, at the time, you know, I look back now and I have learned a lot. You know, so I I, I go to Bible study. There's a four year Bible study that I go to, and there was Connect classes back then. There were Connect classes where. Uh, you know, before COVID, you know, had mm -hmm. the three pastors in town would come and they would take turns yeah. wow. uh, teaching. And it was absolutely perfect for me because I needed lots and lots of reminders because of that, you know, so it was like my RCIA, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, because I didn't have to actually go through that but mm -hmm. in any case. So I learned a lot. And as I learned, um, 
I could look back and I said, oh, that's what I was going through. So, mm -hmm. you know, to make a long story short, it, it's like God's graces are coming. Finally, we're kind of coming into me because I'm mm -hmm. receiving the Eucharist and I'm praying. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably why I, my heart was softened that I had the desire to go back to church to begin with. It took 10 months of praying before my heart was softened enough to even consider going back to church. Well, it, doesn't, it didn't stop then, and it, it's, not, it's still going to this day, right? I'm, yeah. I'm becoming more and more... Um, uh, sanctified or spiritual or, you know, God's graces. Uh, you capture them uh, because you believe and you pray and you're receiving the Eucharist and so on and so forth. And uh, the more graces you receive, the more you're kind of able to capture, you know, uh, your faith grows. So I could see my, it, it wasn't like um, I was right away, you know, automatically, you know, uh, Spiritual it took a lot of time, you right. know, and it's still, it's still, it like takes I said, practice. It, yeah, it's like it, it's like exercise. Yeah, it's like exercising yeah. your spiritual muscles. Almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I, I see it as just like a little bit of grace at a time. Can, mm -hmm. you know, God doesn't just completely transform you like mm -hmm. that. Right? It just, um, you know, it's a slow process. So I could look back and say, oh, so that's what I was going through, or mm -hmm. this is what I was going through at the mm -hmm. time, although I didn't realize it. You know, I came to believe that. Um, when people uh, came up to me in church, I didn't believe it at the time, but that you know it's really Jesus' way of communicating with me. Yeah. So yeah, one one time, uh, Bob Krauss uh, came up and he says, you know, you really should be <clears throat> two or three months in. You really should be coming for the rosary, and you're here every day. You should be coming to the for the rosary. <laughs> so um, so the next day, um, I go to church a half hour early, and uh, this is one of the signs from God. Um, there was an absolutely spectacular full moon, really big and really bright, and it was just right above the horizon, and it's just about to set. And um, so I got to see it because I'm going to church a half hour mm -hmm. earlier, this very first day that I'm going to go earlier for the rosary. And so it was just like, it was just, you know, it just hit me like, I, I think that's God. You know, he's just telling me that he improves that I'm going, mm -hmm. you know, for the rosary. And he's like, mm -hmm. see this moon. And he decided the day Bob would come up to me because he knew there'd be a full moon the next day. Mm -hmm. You know, that, so Mark will see this. And mm -hmm. it's just my way of telling Mark that, you know, you know, I approve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and uh, the Bible study, the very first day I went to Bible study early in the morning, uh, uh, heading over to Marathon City. It's an hour and a 15 minute ride. So fairly in the, mer in the morning, and there's a beautiful big full moon that day, mm -hmm. the very first time I went to Bible study. So mm -hmm. that was like, oh, he's telling me again mm -hmm. that he approves that I'm going mm -hmm. to Bible study. So he, he talked to me in uh, various ways like that. Uh, one day um, when I was out running uh, that spring, it was the first really nice day. Um, the snow was melting. You know, it was like late March, early April, you know, 45, 50 degree mm -hmm. day. And there's a fellow runner that I see, I would see him maybe two, three times a year, and not very often at all. But for, for many years, we're, we're lifelong joggers. And so for many years, we would tend to see each other occasionally here and, and again. So he's coming. And at this point, I'm praying at the rosary while I'm running. And I'm imagining, this is fairly early, I'm imagining that there's a reviewing stand um, and it's God the Father and Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit up in the re reviewing stand and our Mother Mary is up there and they're kind of watching me run and, mm -hmm. and I'm praying and the reviewing stand just is always there to my up and my left mm -hmm. and so I'm just and all of a sudden I see you know so I see this other jogger coming at me and I thought oh I'm going to have to say hi to him and I'm praying and, and, uh, and so I you know he comes and he yells, it's just, he, he's the first one to say something, and he yells over it to me and he says, it's a slice of heaven. And I was just, um, you know, this might just seem like a coincidence to some folks, but it just really just hit me like, wow, <laughs> I can't believe that, you know. And I, I was speechless. Mm -hmm. I didn't say a thing. Not, a word did not come out of my mouth. I just kept jogging by him, which was like, I was just processing it, mm -hmm. you know, is this God talking to me again? Mm -hmm. Again, it probably, it's, just, it's just like I approve, you know, it's mm -hmm. like you're on the right track, keep up the good work, mm -hmm. that type of message, mm -hmm. you know, from, from God. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then... And I, I like that because I, I was actually just talking with a friend about this, a similar type of thing a couple of days ago of how God communicates to us and is our, 
and we were just discussing is something like that is that just an over spiritualization like are we just over spiritualizing mm -hmm. and you know because someone could over spiritualize somebody could say well you know yeah this person said this and it's like obviously god's trying to say this mm -hmm. and that can happen uh but this is precisely not that this is this is not an over spiritualization this is an integration of uh, of the spiritual realities of God and his love and the material realities and the human experience coming together. We live in, in what St. Augustine, he was just, St. Augustine, great hero of the, of the Catholic Christian tradition, he was all about signs as signals, signs as sacraments. Mm -hmm. Sacrament literally comes from the word sign. And so the seven sacraments aren't just sort of these static spiritual things or rituals we do, no, no. They're, they're active and dynamic signals or, or signs of God's presence that we not only can view, but participate in the sign itself. And uh, we live in a, St. Augustine would say, the whole, all of creation is a sign. Everything is a sign. Everything is signaling to God. And so rather what we get from that, that sort of Catholic or holistic or integrated worldview is, yeah, God does talk to us. We might not hear sort of this, this totally spiritual voice in our souls, but we might hear him express uh, his love for us in, in something that somebody might say to us. Yeah. Or, or, or in the sign of his, the beauty of his creation, the moon. Yeah. I love that image too, and you and I were discussing this beforehand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The moon is, is one of the, the eminent um, signs for the Virgin Mary. Because Jesus is the Son, the source of grace, the source of redemption, the source of all light. And what is Mary? Why do Catholics honor Mary? It's not this weird, uh, just sort of obsession with, with with this lady that's not biblical. No, it's Mary is the one who who perfectly said yes to allow the light of of Christ to enter into the world. And so, uh, a patristic and ancient way of, of viewing Mary is she's the moon. She's like the moon. Mm -hmm. All, all the glory in the moon is only present and visible and noteworthy to us because the light is reflecting off of it. And that's right. Mary. And so we want to be like Mary. We want to be like people who the yeah. sun is able to brilliantly reflect off and be a sign for other people too. Yeah. And I, I love the Marian theme here, what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, when you mentioned, I think, uh, part of your penance after reconciliation was learning to pray the rosary. Yeah. You had to yeah. get back into it. Now you, you sort of had this... Uh, affirming moment of seeing the moon. Um, yeah. You were praying the rosary when this man said, slice of heaven, and yeah. you pray all 20 decades. So yeah. does, does Mary have special significance for you? Or what would you say the role of, of her and just mother is for you? Uh, to be well? honest, I, um, at first, uh, I, you know, I would, I, the first six months to a year, I, I remember thinking, I'd much rather pray to Jesus mm -hmm. than to Mary. And then, um, and so I did have that feeling. But then, since then, I've you know come to know through learning that it, the really good, in my mind, uh, rationale for praying to Mary is that Mary is uh, you know Jesus's mother. Yeah. And so, if you convince Mary, or you pray to Mary and say you know please help me, or please help this person you're praying for, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you convince, if you get Mary on your side, and mm -hmm. she asks Jesus, then Jesus won't be able to say no mm -hmm. to his mother. Mm -hmm. Right. So this is, you know, um, how to, you know, get your way with Jesus. One of the best like, ways to get at the king is to go to the queen. Yeah, go to the queen or go to the mother. Yeah. Right. So anyhow, so yes, I, yeah, I do pray the rosary you know, mm -hmm. quite a bit, obviously, every day. So, yeah. So a couple other signs real quick. Uh, um, you know, one day walking out of church, uh, one of the ladies uh, came up to me and said, uh, you know, she introduced herself. She says, uh, you must be new in town because, uh, you know, I see you going to church every day, and I don't remember seeing you. And I said, no. I said, I've lived here for over 30 years, and I'm just recently back to my faith. And so she stops dead in her tracks, and she looks at me and says, very seriously, somebody must be praying for you. Hmm. And it just um, hit me that I immediately thought that my mother was praying for me. And I had, to this point, I had not given it even one thought that my mother might be involved. You know, I wasn't doing this for my mother or anything like that. It was, I hadn't even thought about my mother and it just was like instant. And so I got very emotional 
and we stopped talking and on my ride home I you know I actually had tears mm -hmm. I think there were tears of emotion and joy I mean lots of emotions joy being one of them but you know missing my mother and so on and so forth and uh, I asked uh, Jesus to please let my mother know that I'm back at the church mm -hmm. you know in case she doesn't know so um, you know, fast forward you know from this point I've been working on the tiny house for a couple two three months already and 10 months later, after a year of working on that, on the first day that uh, a family of four, excuse me, family of five, a mom and four kids moved in, and their first full day in the house was um, my mother's birthday. Mm -hmm. And so it was, um, you know, it just, it just, you know, it, and I was not in control of when they were gonna move in. It just, it just happened, right? It was completely out of my control. So I just took that as a sign from, you know, Jesus telling me, yep, your mother knows that you're back at the church. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, really, really um, good. And then the final sign is, uh, yeah, so Car getting back to Carlos, because I prayed for Carlos, and started the whole thing. Uh, wonderful man. Uh, he did pass um, from, you know, cancer. And uh, um, I had gone back and went to church. I, we, we don't have enough time for me to go through that. I went to church with him. He, he served me. He was a Eucharistic minister. He served me Holy Communion and so on and so forth back to New York. And um, in, in any case, um, on the first anniversary of his death, um, I was in uh, adoration and um, I got a voicemail. My phone buzzed. I'm in adoration, so I ignore it. And so when I get out of adoration, I go and um, um, listen to the voicemail. It's from Renee Zimmerman, and she's asking me if I uh, would consider uh, being a seventh grade uh, catechist for religious education that following fall. And so it immediately just hit me. It's just like, oh, it's the first anniversary. You know, Jesus is the only one in this town that knows that this is the first anniversary of Carlos's death. And um, it was very significant to me that I was, you know, for five seconds, it was like, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> but then it was just like, I just, you know, I realized, oh, it's, you know, it's the first anniversary when Carlos passed. I and mean, this is Jesus telling me that I cannot say no. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. He's not going to take no for an answer or, mm -hmm. that, or that he really wants me. Mm -hmm. He really wants me to do this. And mm -hmm. I'm so glad that I'm enjoying it thoroughly, you know, mm -hmm. being a catechist. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, wow. so this is how, you know, God talks to me. Oh, I mean, I could go on and on and mm -hmm. on about these little, the little ways he, you know. mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's, it's wonderful. Right. So, right. Yeah. yeah. I appreciate all, all the yeah. signs. And again, that's, yeah. we, to be, I think, it, I think it's an awakening type of, um, invitation to Catholics to be aware of signs, not, not merely as sort of like sentimental affirmations of, you know, God loves me and things like that, although that's true, but also as an invitation to encounter God in the signs that he gives us to encounter him by, i.e. the sacraments, the sacramental signs. Mm -hmm. Again, these signs are signs, signs that signs might have some sort of sentimental import, and that's good. God likes emotions because he gave them to us and created them with us and said, that's very good when he created us in Genesis. Um, but again, to see sign, to, to a person who has faith, a sign is not, again, the sacraments specifically are not sort of this, uh, this sort of static ritual where we can, whereby we just kind of check the box and we're doing what God wants us to do. Almost like this loveless, business-like way of practicing our faith. No, when rather when, when faith, when personal active faith in Jesus Christ precedes our practice and our entry into these signs, it's, it's what the, the Eastern Church Fathers, the Eastern Patristics would call the synergy of the sacraments. We have the energy, the, the perfect and infinite energy and love of God coming down to meet us in the sacraments through these signs. And then there's the energy of our spirit and our soul certainly finite, certainly limited, but in the sacraments, the synergy, the fusion of the soul, our finite soul connecting with the infinite love of God. And is there anything more dynamic 
and life-giving and integrated that we could possibly imagine. And that is a proper and holistic view of science. And so hearing you talk about this is, yeah, it, it makes me think of, of, yeah. of, the, of, the, of the import and the meaning, the importance of having the right worldview. Right. Firstly, though, as, as faith preceding, not as something that like puts blinders on our eyes, like I just, you know, sort of a blind faith, I believe everything. No, no, there's through the, through the divi reasonable divine revelation of God. The gift of faith that he gives us allows us to see the signs. We don't create the signs in our head. Now, we might if we're not mm. responding in faith and living a life of prayer, but I just think that's a, that's a good yeah. thing to focus on. Yeah. While you were talking, I, I thought one other, and I can't resist. No, oh, please. Um, so I'm, uh, you know, I listen to classical, mu like classical music on, a, you know, internet radio station. So you, you listen to a day, and it, you know when there's new song or whatever. And so one day I was, I read an email. I just got an email from Catholic Life magazine asking me if they uh, could do a story on me. And um, after, as I finished reading the email, it's, it's, my first reaction is, oh, no, I don't want to this do this. And this was because they had heard your story about oh, it conversion? Was, or? Um, it was, I think I was mostly motivated by the tiny house. Okay. But what I was motivated about was telling about my, I had, I had to tell about my conversion. Yeah. But, so I got this email, and it was just like, at, as soon as I um, stopped reading it, Ave Maria came on, and Ave Maria is my one of my favorite songs, mm -hmm. if not my favorite, you know, song, and um, it had never been on this internet radio station. Mary before, strikes cause, again because I knew, you know, I, I listened to it every day, every day, and it's just, and it was just like, and I know that if they had ever played this, mm -hmm. I, I would hear it, <laughs> and uh, so it just wow. it came on at that instant, I, and it was just like, wow. Uh -huh. I can't, you know, it's just like, I, I mean, I'm just like shocked. I, I mean, uh -huh. I can't believe this, you know? Uh -huh. So it's obviously, like, well, okay, I'm not going to say no to this right. interview yeah. request. But that, so yeah. anyhow. Mary at the crossroads of conversion. A couple times yeah. I hear for you. Yeah. So yeah. sort of on, on the other side now as, as a practicing Catholic and having been back, uh, you're coming up on, on four years now? Yeah, it'll be four years in January. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, what... What uh, so you've, you've been heavily involved now as, as a volunteer and giving your time and and you've entered into a life of a deep life of prayer. I see you in the chapel all the time, obviously at mass every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. Why? Yeah. Why do it when you are already happy? So why? What is? Um, yeah, it's it's um, because I became happier. You know, mm -hmm. I was already happier. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, getting by, it's fulfilling, right, to help mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I learned that, uh, um, you know, the two most important commandments, it's all about love. And I, you know, I tell myself each day that, you know, you do everything out of love. You know, you don't do it out of duty. You know, you, don't, you earn your way into heaven, right? You love your way into heaven. And so... Um, uh, I, you know, like I, you know, like you said, yeah, it, receiving uh, the Eucharist every day, it makes a difference mm -hmm. compared to just once a week. It really mm -hmm. does make a difference. Mm -hmm. And being in the chapel for uh, 15 minutes every day, mm -hmm. you know, is helpful. Mm -hmm. And praying the rosary, you know, mm -hmm. and receiving the sacraments um, and, you know, going to confession. I mean, all these, I'm just doing all these things. And I wasn't, you know, I didn't do them like, oh, I woke up one day and so I'm going to do all these things. Right. I mean, I slowly just grew into them. And, um, and the more I do, the more you know, fulfilling my life seems to be. Right. And so I just, it's just a good, you know, positive feedback loop. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, it, it helps. And, they, you know, they say that you have to feed your soul. Mm -hmm. And right. so if I just stop going to church every day and just went on the weekends, I, you know, I would kind of, you know, I think, you know, Go backwards a little mm -hmm. bit in, in my faith journey and mm -hmm. my spirituality. Right. You know, right. so I'm always in, you know looking to kind of increase it. Yeah, yeah. So, so if there was a, uh, was there something you were going to say? No, no. Okay. Well, so if there, I just put you on a spot here a little bit. Um, if <laughs> if somebody was to ask, uh, or, or what would you say to somebody, a Catholic who's maybe lapsed in their faith and not practicing or is struggling to find a reason to stay. 
uh, what might you say to them? Well, um, I guess my, I mean, I would say, uh, you know, God loves you and he wants nothing more than for you to be with him in heaven someday. And you just need to cooperate with him a little bit. And if they ask me, well, how do you cooperate with him? I would say, well, it's the two most important commandments, right? Uh, the first one is love God with your whole heart, your whole mind, and your whole soul, basically everything you have, and love your neighbor as yourself. And, um, and if you do that, um, you will end up being happy here on earth, happier here on earth than you are right now. And if you do it well enough, uh, you might even start to feel like you're already in heaven before you, hmm. before you get there. Right. Yeah. So it's like heaven on earth. Right. And so sometimes I'm, you know, feeling like, wow, this is, this is absolutely wonderful, and I'm, I'm so, I'm so lucky. And and, and by the way, one of my final <laughs> sign is saying my new wife, how did God yeah. talk to me? And I met her in Bible study, Pam. Oh, yeah. I love you, Pam. <laughs> um, she, I, I wake up and I pinch myself. You know, how did I, um, how was, you know, there's a whole set of stories about how um, it, it could not have happened. I might not have gone to Bible. She might have had a, a person uh, driving her. She needed, she wanted someone to carpool with, so on and so forth. And there's a, we can see various things that God was just, you know, arranging for us right. to meet. Right. The Holy Spirit, uh, you know, right. in Bible study. And uh, yeah, so it's just wow. uh, um, wonderful. My life was just uh, absolutely wonderful. I, I do remember praying, um, you know, that I would f uh, find a, a wife where um, we could be a good team, you know, yeah. um, w working for the Lord. And so it would be like one plus one mm -hmm. makes three, you mm -hmm. know, not, you know, so that two of us individually are okay. But when you put us together as a team, we'd actually be more than the two of us adding up right. separately. Right. So, and, oh, that's, that's great. Fulton, and, Venerable yeah. Fulton Sheen famously said, maybe you heard his, his line on this. One of his famous books is, it takes three to get married. Right? It's, yeah. it's the man, the woman, and then God himself. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I'm certainly so grateful for your, for your witness to the faith and, and to Christ and to the church and, a, and a, such a generous heart of service. Mm -hmm. um, and a sense of mission, of, of Christ's mission to love and to heal and reconcile the world to mm -hmm. himself. Um, and yeah, I'm thankful for the chance to be able to sit down and, and hear this more mm -hmm. uh, and for you to, yeah. to share. Thank you story. for the opportunity to, you know, because I, I just, like I said, I can go on and on because it's. <laughs> right. It's just wonderful. So Maybe we'll. I like people to hear, you know. Just yeah. Like, give me an hour, you know, give me a, 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 an excuse to talk. But I, I'm sure people get, you know, like, okay, this is getting old <laughs> pretty quick. But in any case, to me, it's just so, it's just so wonderful. I like talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Amen to that. Amen yeah. to, that, to the power of witness. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thanks very much, Mark. And okay. uh, thanks for everybody for, for yes. sticking around and, and for watching a missionary moment. If you like this, please feel free to share it. Um, God bless and have some missionary moments yourself. God bless. <laughs>